Hi guys, it's Harkin from Hark's Paints, and this is part three of Crash Course. Previously, and if you haven't seen the last one, go and check it out, we did quite a long video about painting. We discussed how we use primers, why we use primers, different types of primers, and then we went from start to finish with the Black Templars Primaris Marine. Now this week we're going to be doing painting again, but it's going to be the opposite end of the spectrum. Instead of using a dark black primer, we're going to be using a light primer and showing how we can go from priming to a fully painted model with a light colour. And instead of it being an Imperial model, it's actually going to be a demon. I've really got into Plague Bearers recently as part of my Nurgle army and um, what we're going to do is actually paint a Plague Bearer from start to finish today. If you're not sure about what I've been talking about so far regarding primers and different colours and colour theory, please check out episode 2 of Crash Course uh, which will be linked below or just go onto my channel. Okay, so without further ado let's get painting. <laughs> Okay, so I know I said we were going with a light primer for this, and we are. For the majority of the model, all we're going to use is Zandri Dust, but we're also going to use a little bit of a bad and black for the dark areas. That's the horn and the weapon. And the first thing we're going to do is dry brush with Ock Grind Camo. So we're just going to take a uh, regular brush for this, and we're going to very gently go over our model and just dry brush the primary areas. So we're going to get all of the flesh, as this is a, well, a very fleshy model, and um, we're going to give it a nice coat of green. Uh, we don't have to get it all in there, we don't want to get entirely in the recesses. Again, this is just a nice dry coat that we're applying. Uh, so go over the majority of the muscle, don't worry about getting it on areas like the horn or the guts because we're going to go over this with multiple uh, takes and layers and washes, so it's alright at this stage if it's a little bit messy. Once it's dried, we're going to use Reichland Flesh Shade to get into all the recesses of the flesh. So make sure you give your wash a good shake and then we're going to get into all of the recesses of our Plague Bearer's flesh and give it a nice coat all over. Again, don't worry if this gets on any of the other areas, it's really not a problem. So really get that flesh shade into the folds and the creases of the skin. The plate bearers, <coughs> sorry, the plague bearers have lots of loose and ripped up flesh and all kinds of gross goodies going on. So really get it in there and then leave your model to dry. Once your model's dry, get your old grind camo again. We're going to give him another go. We're going to just keep on layering up that skin tone and we're really going to just keep on applying it and applying it until we've got the right consistency that we need. So again, we're going to go over all of the flesh components and give them a nice dry pass. Remember to try and keep this to the thicker areas of the flesh, but don't worry if you go into the areas that we've shaded, it's fine because we're going to use multiple shade washes to get the effect that we're going for. Now that our Plague Bearer is taking form, let's really work on those guts and start getting some details in there. I'm going to use Pink Horror to go over the guts and the exposed areas of uh, flesh and muscle. And I'm just going to very daintily go over them. I don't need to go overboard. I'm just going to highlight them as much as possible with this Pink Horror. Again, don't put too much on your brush, but just get in there at the recesses and uh, add a little bit of colour onto the model. As soon as that's dried, get yourself some Druki Violet and Athonian Camo Shade. It's time to do some more washes. The Druki Violet we'll use in the guts, so we'll just get a nice dollop of that and keep that inside the wounds uh, to give it a nice kind of uh, total shade. And the Athonian Camo Shade we're going to apply to all of the flesh. So avoid the areas now that have got the wounds. It's all right if you do get it in there, uh, we can always touch it up a bit later. But try and keep the Athonian Camo Shades entirely on the areas that are flesh. Once that's dried off, it's time to work on the skin again. So we're going to use some Nurgling Green and we're going to go over our model, give him a nice dry pass. Again, this is just layering up, layer up, layer up, layer up. Get a nice dry effect on there. Really bring out the highlights of the skin. We're just going to keep on making multiple passes. 
once that's dried off, we're now going to use Underhive Ash, which is a nice highlight that works well with Nurgling Green. And we're going to go over again, really bring out those muscles. So look for the areas like the muscles in the back, on the biceps, the deltoids in the shoulder, the effects of the face and the calves. We really want to bring out uh, the muscles that are there. Now for the pustules, a lot of people tend to go to the Nurgle's Rot Technical, but I suggest using a yellow tone. Uh, personally, I use Uriel Yellow, and I go over all of the pustules individually to really bring them out, because I'm going to wash over them in a moment, which will dull them down. So don't worry if the yellow seems a little bit too garish at this stage. Now once again, we're going to use the Athonian Camo Shade. We're going to go over all the flesh. We're going to go over the boils and again we're going to avoid the flesh portions uh, that are exposed and pink as much as possible and once that's done we'll leave them to dry. Now while that's drying off let's deal with something else. Let's look at the dark components. We're going to use Balfasar Gold and we're going to very dryly apply that to the weapon so we get like a nice bronzed effect. Once that's done I'm going to use Null Oil and I'm going to give it a very quick wash just to darken down the metal. While that's drying, I take Rakar Flesh, get a nice dry pass of that, and I'm going to apply that to the horn and any of claws and teeth that are on the model. Doesn't need to be too much, we just need to get it so it's different, well it's a little bit different from the rest of the model. At this stage uh, the teeth and the horn might have got a bit of the green on them, we want them to look different. With everything dried, we're now going to use Ogrine Camo once more. This is the last time, I swear. And you want to use the absolute minimum out of this. We just want to pick out certain areas of the model. Again, look for those bits of muscle that are really out there. And once that's done, grab your Reichland Flesh Shade. Now we're going to really get in all the recesses of the model, uh, like the fins, the butt, uh, the back, uh, the biceps, the real muscle joints, and especially on the pustules, just to give them a nice dirt look. Now I'm going to go over my wounds and I'm going to touch them up. Again, pink horror, drooky violet, just go over them. Make sure that you uh, check for any of them that you might have accidentally gone over with your various washes and passes on the flesh. Uh, at the moment this is just neatening and uh, tightening up any areas that we might have missed or we might have smudged. It's uh, just damage control really and it won't take you a moment to quickly go back through your model and touch them up and then apply another wash. Now we're going to use Ushabti Bone. Um, again, I'm just going to use a very thin layer of this and go for the uh, the more outer areas of the, the bone and the claws and the teeth. I'm just shading at this stage. Once that's done, we're gonna go back to the metal. Now, your sword should be dried at this stage, so we're going to use a very dry layer of Rise of Rust to make the sword look nice and rusty. So we need barely any on the brush to bring it out, otherwise it's gonna look bright orange. And when that's done, why not get a Nurgle's Rot Technical? We want to get some real goop on our model, maybe in the guts, around the teeth, especially around the weapon. And we're just going to apply a small amount of that. So, that's how I paint my Plague Bearers, and hopefully that's helped you out. Um, as I've previously mentioned, usually I just prime from black, and I, I'm really, well not until recently, I, I just wasn't used to priming at all with a light tone and kind of gradually building it up. But now that I've started to experiment with it and experiment with different colours from the get-go, I find it actually, you know, a better way of painting. I like to do it with flesh tones and uh, just lighter tones in general just to get a better effect. So it's something I'll be looking to do more of in the future and hopefully tackle in further Crash Course videos. I just want to bring up that when you are painting, try and write down a list of everything that you do. I know it sounds silly, but everything that I do when I paint, particularly if I'm painting something brand new like with the Plague Bearers for the first time, I write down every single thing I do as a process on a notepad. And then I use that like a cookbook so that I can just relate to it and keep all the steps nice and uniform. Initially I had one model that I overwashed at the wrong point and it just looked weird and out of place and I had to go back and completely redo it. It's just kind of like, you know, sanity. So try and check yourself before you wreck yourself. Well, you, you know, your miniatures anyway. So I hope this has helped you out. 
and I hope I can see you next time for more Crash Course. Next time we're going to deal with some much, much quicker paint techniques. I've been talking about how to do terrain for a while in my social media and on this channel. So next time I want to tackle some two-toning and really getting some terrain to put together quickly that'll, you know, it, it, it's a bit of a speedier technique that'll hopefully help you out in the long run. And if you want to help me out on the long run, yeah, you know what's coming. Please like and subscribe, check out the Facebook, check out the Instagram,